In this video, we're going to look at a practical use case for making perfect match 3 levels by using game simulation. We're going to run hundreds of simulations on each level, so this will let us ensure that our levels are perfectly balanced with the correct level of difficulty. Let's begin! This video is sponsored by Unity. Alright, so in a previous video, I already covered the basics for Unity game simulation. Essentially, this is a new Unity feature that lets you automatically run your game in the cloud using certain parameters. And one big benefit is that you can run multiple builds all at once. So you can playtest your game hundreds of times in the cloud using tons of parameter combinations in a very, very short amount of time. Go check out that video linked in the description to learn more and see a basic getting started tutorial. Here, we're going to look at a practical use case for Unity game simulation. We're going to use game simulation in order to ensure that our levels have the perfect level of difficulty. Also, quick note here, Unity is having a machine learning AI summit on December 10th. It's a free one-day event with presentations, panel discussions, and hands-on workshops all about spatial simulation, playtesting, robotics, ML agents, and more. All of it presented by experts and industry leaders. So if you're interested in machine learning or AI, check out the link in the description. So over here, I have a simple match 3 game I made. It's the basic match 3 design. So I can click and drag some gems in order to make matches, and when three or more get matched, they get cleared, others fall down, and more are spawned. Match 3 games are very popular since you can take this underlying logic and apply it to just about anything. So for example, you can make some casual games where you match some candy, or a more hardcore theme where you do matches to spawn more units in a strategy game, or do matches to handle magic spells in a fantasy game, or pretty much anything. So this is a very versatile genre, and what we're going to test here is applicable to all of those scenarios. The underlying base logic is pretty much all the same. So over here we have the base game. We do matches in order to clear the board. Now there are two types of goals. One is to reach a certain amount of score in a certain number of moves, and the other one is to destroy all of the glass blocks, again, all in a certain number of moves. Both of those goal types have a limited number of moves, which is where the difficulty comes in. Now, like I said, we're going to use game simulation in order to perfectly balance our levels so our game has a nice smooth difficulty curve. And if you've seen the previous video introducing game simulation, then you know one requirement is to have the game play itself. So over here, I have made a simple bot script that can automatically play the game. So I just hit play and it starts automatically playing the game. Now, naturally, the quality or skill of your bot will have an impact on the results that you received. But as long as the bot works, you will get a good baseline value to balance around. So we just do this and if there you go, the bot won automatically. This bot is relatively simple, so I'll just go through a quick overview of how it works. Here is the bot script, which is relatively simple. All it does is it listens to some events, so for example, on state changed. So when the state is waiting for the user input, then the bot tries to do a move. Then over here, it goes into our main class in order to get all of the possible moves. So here, this is the main class that handles the underlying game grid. And here on this function, we simply cycle through the whole grid and we test swapping around each grid position with one of its neighbors, then simply go through all of those testing positions. We try doing them, we swap them, we try to see if there's any match three links. If so, we add them to the possible moves list, and in the end, we return that list. So this function essentially goes through the whole grid and identifies all the possible moves and all the matches that doing those moves would result in. Then over here, the bot simply grabs that list of possible moves, and then simply passes that list onto a function to identify the best possible move, so then, depending on the score, it does one of two things. So if the goal type is score, then it simply looks for the one with the most match amounts. And if the goal type is glass, then it simply looks for the one that destroys the most amount of glass. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward bot. You could definitely improve upon this to make it smarter, but like I said, as long as it works, then we have a nice baseline value in order to balance around. Then the levels are all manually designed and stored in a scriptable object, so I can play which one I want. So for example, this level will always start off exactly with this state. So if I stop playing, and now I try to hit play again, and yep, there you go, it loads the exact same level. I also made a simple level editor where I can just easily manually modify each of these grid positions. So here with all of these levels, what we want is to test the difficulty of them. Now using the traditional approach, what I would do would be start playing the game. So here I am, I have a certain total number of moves, I have a certain score that I want to hit. So I would simply start playing, so make this move, there you go, it does that, does that. Now I make another move, another match, and so on, and I get some score. So I do it until I win or lose the game. And then I analyze all the level parameters and decide if I should make this level more difficult or easier. So as you can see, that would be a very manual process that would take ages, especially since match three games usually have tons of levels. So that's where game simulation comes in. We want to use game simulation to very quickly test the difficulty of all of our levels. All right, so let's implement it. 
So here I already have the game simulation package installed and I can simply go into window game simulation. All right now the first thing I need to make these services so let's make that. All right so here's the window fully working. Let's just dock it down here and see. Now I already covered a very detailed getting started guide in the previous video. So in there I covered in detail step by step how everything works. So how to install the package, use the API and the dashboard and so on. So go watch that one if you haven't seen it yet. Here I will assume that you know the absolute basics. All right so with this let's go into the code. Now the code for this game is set up in a really nice and really organized way. So the main MASH3 script has all of these nice events which makes it very easy to interact with. So we're going to make a script to hook onto these events in order to handle game simulation. So let's start off by creating a new C-sharp script. Name this the MASH3 game simulation. Now let's make a game object, give it the same name and attach the script onto it. Okay, now open. And now in here, first off, let's add our using statement. So using unity.simulation.games. Then the first thing we need to do is fetch our parameters. So let's make a private void awake. And then awake, go into the game sim manager, access the static instance and call fetch config. All right, we are fetching our configuration. Again, go watch the other video if you don't know what this is doing but essentially it's downloading all the parameters. So let's go back into the editor. And here on the game simulation window, let's simply add a parameter. Let's name this our level. And for this one, let's make it of type string. And for default value, let's use level underscore A. So I'm using this default value, which matches up over here on the project. There you go, here you can see the various levels stored as scriptable objects. So this is the name that we're going to use and it has to match exactly this perfectly. So by default, we're going to play level A. All right, so that's the parameters. Again, don't forget to click on save in order to save the changes. Okay, everything is good. Now back here on our script, let's go into the game sim config response in order to get a string with the key level. And this one will return a string for our level name. Then we just need to grab the scriptable object that refers to this level name. So let's add them up here. All right, so just a list of the level scriptable objects, make it serializable. So let's see it in the editor. And here I've got the level list, so let's just lock the inspector and drag all the levels on there. All right, these are all the levels. And now here, just cycle through it. All right, so we cycle through the list. We find the one that matches the name of our parameter, and then we simply have that level. Then let's also add a simple test to select a default level in case we cannot find it. So just keep things safe in case we accidentally give it a bad value. All right, so far so good. Now let's add a reference to our match3 script. Okay, we have this and then in there, there's a function in order to load a level. So just call it and pass in this load level. All right, so just like this, we should be loading the correct level for testing. So right now we should be loading the default level. So yep, right away we are loading level A. So here in the console, we can see, yep, config fetch level level A. All right, it worked. And just make sure that it is working. Let's change this to level B, hit save. And yep, now it loaded level B. All right, so the logic for loading the level based on the parameter is all fully working. Now back in our game sim script, let's listen to the events from the main class so we know when the bot either wins or loses. So here, just go into match three and subscribe to the on win event and on out of moves, which is when the bot loses. All right, here we have both of our events. So here we have our win. And now in order to save the simulation result, we set the counter. So we go into the game sim manager, access the static instance, and we're going to use set counter in order to set a certain counter. Now over here, essentially we have three ways of testing how difficult a level is. So one approach, we can give the bot a target score in unlimited moves, and we test how many moves it takes to reach that score or we can give it a limited number of moves and see how much score it gets, or we can set both a target score and a limited number of moves and see how many times the bot wins and how many times it loses. So essentially, all of those approaches are valid. Now in this case, since we're running the simulation for the very first time, I think it makes sense to set a goal and give it unlimited moves to test how many it takes to win the level. Then after we do that simulation, we can then do a second one with a limited number of moves and see how many bots win and how many lose. So here, let's simply save how many moves it won. And let's also save the level name. So let's store here a reference to the level scriptable object. And in here, when we set the level, let's set this one to this load level. Okay, so here we have the level that we're running. So just do this. 
use the name, then a underscore, and let's say win moves used, and then for the value that we want to store. So let's go into the match three, and in there I have a function to get the used move count. So this way, when the bot wins, we're going to save how many moves the bot took in order to win that level. So this one will work for both of our goal types. Now here in the level, just make sure that all of the levels have enough moves in order for the bot to win. So all of them are set to 100, so that's good. That should be more than enough. And then on the lose event, let's also save. And we're going to save the level name, then lose. And then here we don't really need to store any value, but let's just store one so we can easily count how many times the bot lost. All right, so with this, we have everything all set up. Now all that's left is making sure that the bot stops playing after it either wins or loses. So let's go down here in order to make a function. Let's call it end game simulation. And in here we simply call application.quit. But again, we don't want to quit if we're working in the editor. So let's add a if unity editor. If we're in the editor, then go into the editor application and simply set is playing into false. All right, this is our function to end the simulation and up here we simply set the counter and end the simulation, set the counter and end. All right, so everything is set up. So we start off by fetching the config. Once that happens in here, we get the parameters. So in this case, we just have the level. So we get it. Then we load the level that matches that parameter. Then the bot does its thing. It plays through the level and it either wins or loses. And depending on that, then we save the result of our simulation. All right, so all the logic is working. Now let's test again, just to look at the console. So here it is, the level loads, the bot is playing automatically, and here is the console. You can see we fetch the config, then let's see if the bot wins or loses. And there you go, the bot won. We have our game over, we wrote our counters, and we quit the application. All right, so everything went perfectly. Now go into the game simulation window, and in here go into build upload. Let's include our one scene, and then give it a name, and simply click on build and upload. All right, here in the console, we can see that it was built and uploaded. So now we just click on create simulation. Okay, here we are, create a simulation. First of all, we'll give it a name. So like first test with unlimited moves. Then we select our build, okay. And over here we have our level parameter. So we've got our default value, level A. Then let's try with all of them. So just put all of them. All right, all the levels. Then down here for the number of runs per combination. So in this case, let's go with something like 100 times on each level. Now again, the whole point behind Indie Game Simulation is to run the cloud in parallel. So in a more proper game, we could go increase this tenfold to 1000 runs per combination and it would not take 10 times longer. So eventually when your game would be close to complete, you could put a massive number in here in order to ensure that everything works perfectly fine. But in our case, for our first test, let's go a little bit lower, just 100 runs. Then for the max runtime per run, now each level probably takes under a minute, but just in case, let's put two. All right, everything is set up. We are going to test all of our levels. We're going to test 100 times on each level and everything's gonna run. All right, so just hit on run. Okay, now the simulation has been queued, so all we need to do is wait for it to complete. All right, so here I am a bit later, and as you can see, the simulation has completed. And right away, you can see just how awesome game simulation is. So it has only been about 30 minutes, but in reality, it ran through 1,700 minutes of simulation. So you can see just how insanely efficient this is. Now, right away, we have our reports so we can download them. So the main one we want right now is the aggregate data. All right, here it is. And right away, we can see all of our results. So we can see we ran 100 instances of each simulation type. Over here, we can see the settings. So this one, level A, B, C, D, and E. And we use counters in order to track how many moves were used in order to complete the level. So over here, we can see the average, maximum, minimum, the standard deviation, the sum, and the number of instances. So for example, right away, we can see that on level A, it only took one move to win. So right away, we can see that level A is way too easy. Then on level B, we took six moves to win. Then level C, seven, then 19, and then 24. So now with this data, we can analyze this and figure out what we do in regards to our level. So for example, level A is way too easy. And here we can see on level A, that only takes is the bot doing just one move, and right away it triggers a ton of things, so it automatically hits the target. So in our case, let's modify the target on level A, and let's put it at, let's say, 10,000. And then for the number of moves, let's say 10 moves. So here playing manually, let's do that move. And yep, with just one move, already got tons of scores, so just do another move, and so on, and everything works. 
All right, so here we have level A, which is very easy, exactly as it's supposed to be. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. Then on our level B, it took on average six moves. So the level B is a glass level and six moves sounds about right. So again, this one is meant to be relatively easy. So if the bot can do it in six moves, then let's make the move amount about 10. Then on level C, it took seven moves. So here, this one is meant to be a bit harder. So for the move amount, let's set it to about 12. Then on level D, it took 20 moves. So that's possibly a bit too much of a difficulty increase. Again, the goal is to reach a nice balanced smooth difficulty curve. So I can modify the number of moves or I can edit the level in order to modify just how many nodes are encased in glass in order to make it easier or harder. Or I can also modify the various gem types that are used on each place. So as you can see, game simulation gives you all the data and then it's up to you to decide what to do about it. And then finally on level E, which is the toughest one, so it makes sense that it took an average of 24 moves with a maximum of 30 moves and a minimum of 11 moves. All right, so we used all the data in order to balance our levels. And if we want, we can manually go through them in order to ensure that it looks very nice. All right, so with this many moves, the level is indeed perfectly balanced with exactly the level of difficulty that I was going for. Okay, so with this, we have perfectly balanced all of our levels. Now, the difficulty curve for our game is looking quite great. However, now let's say we continue working on our game and we want to add a new feature. So let's say we want to add a power-up that destroys various blocks instantly. So I have in mind that when there's a four-link match, one of the gems will explode and take down all the gems around it. So as I move this one, yep, there you go, all of those were destroyed. So as you can see, adding that feature does cause a significant change in our level. So adding the feature is relatively simple, but then comes the question of exactly what does that new feature does to all of our perfectly balanced levels. So this is where we see the real power of game simulation. We already added that feature and now we don't even need to touch the simulation code at all. We just need to go back into our game simulation window and make a new build to upload with our changes. All right, the new build has been uploaded. And back in the game simulation dashboard, over here we have a button where we can easily clone a previous simulation. So here we have all of our level parameters, all of them running a hundred times once more. So just over here, pick a new build. So it's that one, give it a different name and just run the simulation. All right, there it is running. Now, once again, we wait. And now the second simulation has completed. So let's analyze our results. Here is the new aggregate results compared with the previous ones. And we can see that by adding the new exploding gem, we did indeed modify how the levels play. So we can see in level A, after our changes and after adding new feature, now it takes four moves to actually win. Then level B takes around six moves, level C around five, level D around 10, and level E around 15. And at the same time, we also added the unlimited number of moves to the level, so the bot actually lost a few times. So over here on level B, the bot actually lost eight out of the 100 times. And then on level D, it lost 14 out of 100. So once again, now we have all of this data and we can use it to rebalance our game. And just like that, we add the new feature and easily balance the game in just a few minutes. Now, just imagine this applied to a real game with hundreds of levels and dozens of special moves. And you can see just how insanely useful game simulation is. At the push of a button, you can run hundreds or even thousands of simulations and ensure your game is always perfectly balanced. All right, so I hope you like this practical use case of the benefits of Unity game simulation. The package is in active development, so Unity is looking for all the feedback they can get. Try it out for yourself, and if you have any issues, go into the forums or email the team directly. This is a really fascinating feature that can be a huge help to both small indie developers as well as large studios. Alright, so thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.